What's up, ZBrushers? Welcome back to Z Fever. My name is Ricky, and today we are going to continue our discussion about um, matte caps and illustration techniques inside of ZBrush, right? So, um, if you haven't noticed, this is probably one of my favorite things to do uh, here inside of ZBrush is to take a sculpture and then turn it into a 2D illustration. Uh, previously, I've talked about uh, some very basic stuff where uh, you basically just use a material mixer and, uh, and, and some other stuff to get a sort of outline effect and all that cool stuff. But what we're going to do today is we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the uh, material palette and how to uh, u utilize uh, mat caps to get a desired effect. Okay, so um, what I would recommend if um, is uh, utilizing this little resource here. Um, you can I'll post the link here in the description in a, in a little while. But uh, this is a really exhaustive um, breakdown of the techniques I'm going to be going over. And he actually goes over a lot more than, than I'm going to be able to cover in this time frame. But, uh, you know, it's it's donation-based. Um, I would recommend, you know, like five bucks. You know, this guy went through and, and took the time to uh, put all this stuff together. So... Uh, I would recommend, you know, helping a brother out, okay? So, um, so the techniques that we're going to be talking about are pretty much covered in there. If you want to have something that you can fall back on, um, that uh, you can leave on one page and, and uh, not get lost, right? Okay, so um, what we're going to be focused on is the uh, material palette. I've got a ton of other palettes that are open right now. But uh, let me shut those down. So we're going to be focused pretty much on the material palette. And uh, we'll look into the mixer a little bit later. And, and that's pretty much it. Um, so the cool thing about this is that, you know, if, if you're looking for ZBrush as far as an, an illustrative uh, tool, right, then you can kind of forego the, uh, the, the whole traditional... Uh, game development or film development uh, techniques, right? And you could just get right down to business. So uh, this character that I created, it's, uh, it's just a combination of, of sorts. Uh, my squadron in the Marine Corps was the Raiders, and uh, our, our mascot was the Jolly Rogers. So I kind of wanted to um, take that and, uh, you know, <clears throat> create some sort of illustration. So I, I created this, and, then, and I'm in the process of developing a bit of a poster to get uh, sent over to the squadron and, and posted up in the halls and stuff like that. So um, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of these properties up here and how we can utilize them um, because there there's a lot of stuff that you can do with a little bit, you know, just minimal effort. Uh, and then we're also going to talk about uh, use, utilizing uh, light cap to get some stuff going and we'll also jump into Photoshop a little bit. So um, let's see. Come down here. And uh, the, the material that I'm going to be using is just um, you can use pretty much any one that you want to. Uh, you know you could use a, a sketch shade 4 if, if that's what floats your boat. But um, what we're going to be doing with this is we're going to be adjusting some parameters. And they're very basic parameters. Uh, it's basically just going to be your cavity detection, your cavity transition. Um, and those things are really going to help to sell whatever it is that you're, that you're trying to uh, develop, right? So um, let's see. Uh, Craig, a matte cap is, is called a material capture, right? So um, it's basically baked in light sources, right? Um, that, uh, and it will, I'll, I'll go through uh, probably in another day or so and do a full blown discussion on matte caps. So uh, stick around, well, not, don't stick around for an entire day, but um, I'll give you a heads up whenever we go through and cover that stuff, okay? 
Um, so let's see. So what you can do is um, with the basic uh, mat cap, right? It's got um, different shaders or different shader qualities that you can use. Um, now, if I come over to say a basic material, right? Uh, you're gonna see some some other stuff uh, that's that's available. So I can control uh, reflectivity, metallicity, right? Um, and this is probably going to be probably going to show up more in the uh, in the render. But you can uh, there's different parameters that become available with different uh, materials. So I'm going to stick with uh, a matte cap, and you can use these and blend them together. But I'm going to use just a sketch shaded uh, four for my base matte cap, right? And I want to adjust some things. You can control the spec, uh, whatever the cavities are. Let's grab a different one. So I'm just going to use a basic um, mat cap. So you've got a mat cap. You can grab any one that you want to. But what I'm looking for is is uh, basic uh, controls here, right? And I'll uh, whenever we go through and break down mat caps in another day or so, we'll we'll talk about how to. Uh, Get these things going the way that you want them to but there are some things that you can control in here um so the other day we were talking about uh using the mixer to create outlines right and using those uh using outline with uh your depth controls to uh kind of create a bit of a comic book feel right uh, but we can push it further than this right and so uh what i'm going to do is uh we're going to focus on how to do that so uh we're the, the key to this is using your cavity detection and your cavity transition, right? And uh, if you can do that, then uh, it's really going to help sell whatever object that it is that you're, uh, you're trying to create. So um, right now what I'm doing is I'm just uh, blending the intensity of these uh, two different uh, colors. So I can change this B to a black right and I can go through and really change things up so now it looks like he's kind of you know from coming from an x-ray or some crap but I can change this color to a white but the thing is, is that you notice that it's picking up this this off-white color and the thing is, is that it's pulling from this texture so if I turn the texture off then you're gonna see that uh, things kind of don't work out the way that we want them to right but I can grab a different texture and throw that in there okay and so there's some things you can do with these textures uh, that really kind of control how things fall off, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a texture that I created and I'm going to show you um, how it looks. So I'm going to import this test mat cap and I'm going to show you how it looks here in Photoshop. And so what I have is uh, left to right, top to bottom, uh, I've got a gradient that's happening in uh, four quadrants, right? And so what this is doing is uh, the way that it works inside of this mat cap is that it causes um, this mat cap to behave along the parameters of the normals of the uh, object that you're sculpting, right? So anything in the top quadrant, any any normals that are facing upward, 
are going to be uh, following these colors. Any normals that are facing downward are going to be following these colors. In the same light, any normals that are facing uh, left of to 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 our left as we're looking at the screen um, are going to follow in these areas and uh, alternatively to the right. Okay. Now anything right here in the middle is basically what's going to be facing us dead center. So we can we can apply whatever color that we want to. And so what I want to show is something a little bit more drastic, right? So right now uh, you'll see that it is following along with these colors. And I can change this intensity. Let's see. Let's change. So I can I could change uh, this image a bit. So right now, anything that's facing me straight on, right, is going to be white. But let's say I go through and I adjust this a bit, right? So let's say I decide that I want to throw a black circle in here. And let's just, just for the hell of it, let's uh, let's do this. And grab this. I'm going to fill this with a black, then deselect. There we go. I'm just going to get rid of that. Okay, so I've got these various uh, tones that are happening here, and I'm going to save this out as. Um, Test mat cap two. And you'll see whenever I apply this, it's going to, um, what it should do is it should force that anything that's facing straight dead on should be black. And then some of the transitions around will, uh, will have a different effect. So what I'm going to do is grab this, import that texture. So um, understanding how this works can really help us to make design decisions whenever we're going through and trying to design a comic book feel, right? Um, so you'll see that uh, I can continue working with this, like with my cavity transition, right? I can drop this, say, all the way down to zero where we have zero transition, right? And it almost has a posterized look, okay? And what's happening is that it's not really picking up uh, all all the uh, brush strokes that we had or the, uh, that, that we have whenever we went and sculpted. But uh, I can crank this up and I can bring this cavity detection in the positive or the negative, right? And it just depends on what your aesthetic, what you're going for aesthetically. Then I can also control this depth, right? So bring this all the way up, and then let's say I want to go in the opposite direction, 
then I can uh, control this transition right and so there's really a lot of things that you can do with this if you know what it is that you're that you're going through and doing and notice that we haven't even really talked about uh, the the previous mixer that we were using while uh, on one of the last discussions but if I wanted to take this and then uh, add some posterization to it then I can come through and really go to town with uh, say my outline right control the depth and this is all straight right here inside of ZBrush I don't have to go anywhere else to get these results and then I can turn around and um, and take this information and uh, and take it into Photoshop and then compile it however I need to. But let's say we don't want to go out to Photoshop to create uh, a material, right? Uh, let's say we want to have something that's just very basic or something that we want to create here inside of ZBrush. Uh, what we can do is we can actually use uh, light caps. So what I want to do is I'm going to switch over to another material. In fact, I'm going to switch over to a completely different tool. got the Donald here um, <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna turn it into something that uh, that I can I can throw into Photoshop and just um, um, and just kind of <clears throat> figure out a way to to make this a little more appealing now uh, previously I was using a sketch shade 4 I believe yeah uh, but I can go through and I can make some changes to this. Okay, so let's say I want to what Mac cap? I'm just going to grab a random Mac cap. So we're going to grab this green room Mac cap. And uh, the things that I'm going to be controlling in here are basically my my A and B channels. And so these are all colors, right? Um, so if I add a black color to this channel and let's go through and um, let's do a fill so I'm gonna go up to my Z plugin I'm gonna go fill and I'm just gonna fill with the material okay and uh, what this will do right now it doesn't look so great uh, but what I can do with this is I can actually use this base as my means of um, work so uh, what I can do is say alright I want to change some of these parameters turn on cavity uh, detection right now we really can't see anything so let's grab let's grab that uh, that previous color that we had so So I can take this and see if we can get it brightened up a bit because things just aren't looking so great right now. So we can control our intensity and in, and in, wow, he really looks like a demon. <laughs> so we can control this and then we can control say our depth, right? And right now, uh, I don't have any cavity transitioning happening, but if I start bumping this up, you'll start seeing some of those uh, things coming out. Uh, and it seems a little bit inverted, so what I could do is uh, change my cavity transition in the opposite direction, and it'll help those things to um, work a little bit better. Oh, the Trumpocalypse.
<laughs> so, um, you can control pretty much anything that you need to in here. Um, it, but it's just a matter of understanding how these things work and play together. Um, so right now what we have is is something, it's going, we have this transition that's going straight off the center. So maybe this is a little bit intense. Maybe we want to have something um, that's a little more friendly towards us. So we could either use something like this or we can actually use some of the uh, materials that are already available, right? So this is actually just a, a textured noise, right? Um, this may not be exactly what we want. Um, we could control with this star. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, but the thing is, what is happening is, like we discussed before, is is that this square is just like here, right? So it's going to be affecting how these colors fall off of the normals. So if I understand that, then I can turn around and I can say, okay, what happens if I decide that I want to add some colorization to these? Um, and let's do this with with ZBrush since uh, I kind of got distracted in telling you that. Um, <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll actually just use a light cap. Okay, so I'm going to I'm actually just going to turn this off. Okay, and uh, don't worry that this is completely uh, blacked out. What we're going to do is we're going to switch over to a basic material, and I'm just going to fill just with the materials, just so we can see what, what we're doing. Okay, so what's going to happen is I'm going to go up to my light, and I'm going to create a new a new light cap, right? And so what's going to happen is I'm just going to go through and I'm going to delete all those little lights that we had. So you have your basic lights and then you have light caps, right? And what we can do with light caps is um, we can use this to uh, create a little bit of a different look. So um, if you've never used light caps before, don't worry. Um, it's, it's nothing scary. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn just my standard light off so that the only thing that I'm working with is is these light cap lights and uh, you just have a, a few extra controls in here that you can play around with and um, you can control things like the the aperture of the light the uh, how the light falls off you can make it pretty darn harsh right um, you can control how the shadows play with it um, you can even add an alpha Right, so I can go alpha, and let's see. Let's use a, uh, a circle alpha, and then let's tile it a few times. And I can even control the scale and the orientation of this thing. Right, I don't really like that alpha too much. Let's switch to a square. Okay, there we go. So I can control this orientation, I can control where it falls, I can control the scale of it, I can even blur it out a bit if I need to. Um, but then I can go through and I can add another light. So I've got this happening over here, but that's cool. Um, but what if I want to add some variation to this? So I've got this other light, and you can cycle through these lights with these little arrows here. So if I want to make sure that I can either try to click on it, or I can just cycle um, back and forth to this. You can also control the uh, specular, whether it's a specular light or uh, diffuse. Um, so with this, I'm going to just uh, add some variation, some colors. Um, And this is not a political statement whatsoever. I just this just happens to be what uh, what I have. All right, so I just want to make some things that are drastic. Um, control the aperture of this.
Let's make it a specular light. Now I can continue going around. Let's uh, let's add another light. Let's change this to say a um, like the idea of this dichotomy of red, white, and blue. Um, and we're gonna try to create some sort of posterization without with just just with lights, right? Got that going on. There we go. All right. So keep it in mind that once we start to use this, so I'm going to use this uh, this light cap. Uh, as as my mat cap uh, image, right? And uh, keeping in mind that anything in the in these quadrants here, why don't I close this out? Um, anything that's in these quadrants. So, if I were imagining this as a, a top, bottom, left, right, anything on the top side is going to uh, be affected by the normals uh, facing upward. Anything in the bottom uh, is going to be facing affecting the normals facing downward right so I want to keep that in mind as I'm going through so um, <clears throat> I'm going to add one more light uh, just to illustrate a point so I'm gonna add this light but I'm gonna grab a completely different color right something that's you know I guess we're going RGB with this but uh, Just so we can blend things a bit. Okay, so I've got this happening, and now I want to create an image out of this. Okay, and uh, you know, so I can go. I can either create an environment, which is actually going to create like an HDR light, or I can create a texture. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to hit create texture. What happens with this is it takes this and it drops it into our texture palette. Okay, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn all of these lights off, right? I'm going to delete every single one of them. And I'll just uh, turn that light back on. And I'm going to switch back over to um, to a matte cap. Let's say, uh, let's just use uh, the zebra gray. And then I'm going to fill just the material, not the color. And what you'll see is happening is that this material uh, is operating off of this image, right? And so if I want to change that, then I can just change to this, right? And now you'll see things have kind of gone absolutely crazy, right? And what is happening is that uh, this is following suit with, with, um, with what we had in mind, right? And so now I can go through, and uh, I can control this intensity. And uh, really go to town with uh, how I want things to be. Turn on my cavity detection. Um, turn up my intensity. And turn my cavity transition completely off and kind of give it a posterize. Um, and control the saturation. I mean, there there's so many different ways that you can go with this. You could even uh, 
go monochrome with this right so this is going to take this image make it completely monochromatic which could be a good thing um, and in fact let's play with that a little bit so I can take this work with my depth a bit right and really start pushing some of this um, I can control the orientation of this image how things fall off right um, and so the sky is pretty much the limit but then I can turn back around and I can go over to my uh, mixer and I can say okay well that's cool let's see what happens when we posterize right and then I can even go further and add some uh, outline to it right can control the depth of this and it really just kind of depends on the the type of vibe that you're going for so um, let's adjust this so if I turn that off it pretty much cuts out any cavity detection um, if we go in this direction So, like you, like I said, you can really uh, come up with some dramatic stuff with this. So it just kind of depends on on what your creative goals are and uh, what what your stylistic um, preference is, right? And th the other thing is, uh, whenever you're working with stuff like this, is uh, this, this cavity detection. Um, it's going to be based on whatever you sculpted, right? So if you go through and you, you make some changes and you decide that uh, this is a mat cap that you want to save, uh, you can save this out. But the thing is, is that... Don't know what happened there, but whatever. So <laughs> what we're going to do is uh, I'll, I'll post this link, and uh, you guys feel free to check it out. Uh, some of these materials, um, these types of materials, I do have some of them up on the uh, Z Fever group. So definitely check them out. Um, you know, materials like, say, this. Um, and this is a material that he's... Uh, that this guy's already gone through and adjusted and he has a pretty simple image right uh, this is his image that he's using um, to, to be cast across this entire thing right um, so these are things to understanding how those how those uh, how light falls off uh, based on these images can really help you to stylize things quite a bit and then also understanding how uh, cavity detection and um, and everything comes into play can really help you to sell whatever design uh, idea it is that you're going after right so you're not just limited to whatever is just right there and available to you you can really uh, make some dramatic changes very quickly so um, I hope this has been helpful and uh, if you guys have any questions definitely hit me up um, feel free to do so through the Z Fever group or uh, in the comments on this channel and I uh, hope you guys are having a great day. So uh, take care.